pleasant night to you, viewers. My name is Minister Nicholas Robertson. And tonight I was asked to share a testimony. I'll give snippets of testimonies, uh, but I feel led to do it on the, the focus, the topic. Know your source. Sometimes we mistake the resource for the source. So for example, you think your job is a source. You think your husband is a source or your wife is a source. You think your family is a source. But tonight, even as I share with you, I want to let you know and I want to tell you, make sure you clearly identify who your source is. And your source is God. I remember a couple of years ago, I wanted to go to college. Um, by now, I was a young minister within the church and I wanted to go on to college to study, pursue a first degree. And I remember I didn't have the money to go. I remember like any other person, I was so discouraged, depressed. I felt so discouraged that I didn't want to continue to keep on serving. I remember one evening I went home and I knelt down about six o'clock one Sunday evening after leaving church. I knelt down and I said, God, I will never go back to church again until you bless me. And I cried and I said, God, if you can do it for other people, then why can't you do it for me? Kid you, brethren, that one week, exactly one week after, God sent a woman all the way from England, totally unknown to me, hallelujah, to come to church, to a church that she was not familiar with. To come and find a young man that she did not know. To, to tell me that the Lord said to her last week, Sunday, while I was praying, is that she ought to come to Jamaica to bless me. My first tuition was paid. I again say to you, know your source. A couple years ago, when I got married, uh, I used to go around and minister. And one night after leaving service, I was getting ready to walk home as I usually do. The Holy Ghost said to me, why is it that you are walking home? Uh, haven't you just preached about faith? And so I, 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 said to my, I, I said to my wife, who was next door to me, honey, we're not walking home tonight, we're driving home. And brothers and sisters, my wife came you know, because she would believe me when I decided to challenge God and believe God. And we got into our imaginary vehicle, driving down the bad road. <laughs> Putting on the indicator. Uh, driving in the middle of the road as if we were real. We were in a real vehicle. And people of God, there were people along the road roadway who laughed at us i remember two young men lie down in the middle of the road and they laughed at us the long and short of it is that god didn't just provide one vehicle but the lord provided three vehicles in that space of time i am here to tell you remind you to know your source i went somewhere to share that very same testimony and after sharing the testimony the lord said to me then why not believe me for the home and brothers and sisters i went to work the following morning and a person totally unknown per person who doesn't even know said air came to me and showed me a property that was for sale and said aren't you interested in this brothers and sisters my wife and myself we went on the property and when we got there god said this is yours this is yours and i remember that we drove the car up onto onto, on, on, onto the property as far as we could because there was all bush and grass and i said we are parking in our imaginary garage we came out of that car and walked through imaginary doors lie down in imaginary beds hallelujah sat in imaginary couch turn on imaginary television and today brothers and sisters we own a home 
hallelujah, at the exact spot that we believed God for. At the time, we never had the money to pay even the deposit. The owner for the property came up and saw me and he said, young man, if you can give me 10%, then I will start to build. And I said to him, I didn't even have 10%. The following week, he came back and he saw me again on the property. Hallelujah. Opening up my imaginary doors and 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 and, and, and sitting down in my imaginary coach and he said, Young man, what is it that you want? Give me five percent. And I said, I don't have five percent. And the man looked at me and said, You give me anything you have, and I will start building. Would you believe that I gave that man less than three hundred thousand dollars? And he he built that prop, he built that house for us until we were able to fully foot the cost and go through the whole process with NHT. Today we have a house on the same property. I remember while I was trying to, to go to the University of the West Indies, that when I applied for the course, I didn't have the money to pay down, uh, to pay the tuition. And my wife made the first faith offering, uh, faith offering into my tuition and said, listen, you will go until they say you can't go anymore. And anybody who is familiar with the University of Boston is know that you can go all the way to school up to the point somewhere in October there when it comes to mid-semester where they will deregister you because you will not be able to do your examinations. And I remember going up even to the week before the exams and they kept sending all this warning that I need to pay this money and I did not have the money to pay. Hallelujah, this was just in 2013, not a long time ago. And I remember clearly, I remember clearly having not had the money. Hallelujah. I, 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 I started to become worried again. And I almost said, it don't make no sense. I continue to do this. I may as well stop. And you know what the Lord said? Study for your exams. Can you imagine not having any money, not knowing where the source was going to come from? And God said, study for your exams. I remember one evening I was on my way to the camp. At the time, I was a reserve soldier. And, I, and, 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 and the, the Holy Ghost just said to me, look up. And when I looked up, I saw a sign that says scholarship. And I just immediately rushed into the credit union and said, God, if you show me, then there is something here for me. When I asked the person at the front desk, uh, uh, the requirements for the scholarship, she looked at me as if I was crazy. She said, young man, what date is it? And I said to them, it's the 3rd of October, 2013. And the person said to me, that don't you see that the deadline was the 19th of August, 2013? Brothers and sisters, I'm reminding you, know your source. Even when the resource tells you no, remember who your source is. If your source is God, then he will make a way where there is no way. He will take you through the wilderness so that he can demonstrate that he is the provider by feeding you with manna. He will take you to the wilderness and, 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 and spring up water out of a rock just to feed you so that you will know that he is God. I remember that I asked, I said, can I speak with the manager? And she was like, you can't speak to the manager because you don't have an appointment. Hallelujah. I remember turning around and the first person I saw was a lady coming down and she had the manager badge on. And I said, woman, can I speak with you? And, uh, sorry, and, and she, she was like, what do you want to talk to me about? And I said, do you want to be a part of the good side of my testimony. Now, when I share this to people over the world, and you will be blessed because people will be rejoicing in the good deed you did 
or do you want to be on the negative side that when God comes through anyhow, I will be talking about this lady who didn't even give me a, a, a help or a helping hand. And so she said, let me hear you out. And I told her I was interested in the scholarship. She told me, what faith caused you to still think that there is a scholarship? Seeing that so many things, so many days went by. Why do you think there is still a scholarship? I said, if the Lord shows me, there is still a scholarship. Brothers and sisters, I... The lady said to me, if you can get me the documents in seven days, then I will put you in for the scholarship. And she says, as a matter of fact, today is Monday, next week, Thursday, is the interview for the scholarship. I quickly called the Churchill's College, that was school I was going at the time, and requested all the documents that I needed and submitted them in one day. Brothers and sisters, Nick, the, the following Thursday when I turned up for the interview, all six candidates, all, other, all six other candidates were present already. I was the one who was, was seven. And you all know that seven is the number of completion, is the number of fulfillment, is the number of the perfect will of God. And so I turned up seven. And the lady unseen me said, come, you come, you come first. Now watch this. The Bible was being fulfilled. How many of you know that God will cause you who was at the end to move to the front of the line? You see, the Bible said the first shall be the last and the last shall be the first. And so having turned up there last, the Lord would fulfill that scripture. When I went in for the interview, as I got in there, this lady was fascinated by the faith that was in me. How many of you know that God will use the foolish things, the things that people throw to the door? God will use those foolish things to conform the wise. It wasn't my education merely that caused those people to want to interview me or give me a first place at the seat, at, at the table. It was because of my foolish faith, my foolish obedience, who saw a sign and didn't read it to realize that the, the deadline was gone. And even after hearing that the deadline was gone, I insisted that I needed to, I needed to, um, I needed to do the interview. Brothers and sisters, I, the, the long and short of it is after about 10 minutes in the room being interrogated about my faith, I end up inviting all seven interviewers to prayer. Prayed for them. I was about to walk out. The woman said to me, you wait at the front. Somebody will take for you a Take for you your check. And don't tell the others on the outside. Because you are successful. And we don't want them to think that there is no scholarship. So let we'll still go through the process. But you are the one who was successful. Brothers and sisters, I went to the UE that day knowing that my exam was going to start at 1 p.m. I got here 15 past 1. I didn't have the time to go to SAS to make the payment. The lady would not let me in. I gave her the check in her hand and I said, use this, hold this as your as as, as your guarantor, your guarantee. Uh, this this is this is your evidence. And and, 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 and and so I'm asking you to allow me to go in and do my exam. I went in and did my exam at the University of the West Indies. The, 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 the long and short of it, brothers and sisters, that I did not just complete a first degree. The Lord covered my, 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 my tuition, made provision, that I didn't just complete a first degree, but I ended up completing a master's degree. So I'm here to tell you tonight, encourage you to know your source. If you don't know anything else, know your source. When everything else in your workplace and in your home, in your family, in your church tells you no, know your source. And your source 
is Jesus. And he said, if you ask, it shall be given. If you knock, it shall be open. Hallelujah. And so I encourage you. I encourage you. I hope that this testimony was an encouragement to you uh, in your circumstance to find your source and believe your source. God bless you. And thank you for listening to me. God bless you.